and uh, that was O Holy Night, which was recorded and was posted earlier on Rose Hill United Reformed Church Facebook, um, beautifully played there for us. So good evening everyone and welcome to uh, Saturday evening's um, Synod Prayers for this Christmas Eve, the 24th of December. Our opening praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. We come to glorify God, to rejoice in the one who saves us. God comes so that we might believe, so that we might be blessed. Our hearts leap for joy. For God is coming to us in a child. God comes to those who hunger for hope, for those who thirst for grace. Holy is the one who comes in God's name, who fulfills every promise of God. God comes to walk with those who follow in faith, to bring peace to a shattered world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for evermore. Amen. And our hymn this evening is, is um, Once in Royal David City.
beautiful choir there from the uh, King's College. So, to Psalm 72. Endow the King with your justice, O God, the royal Son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, and the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea, from river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow down before him and his enemy lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the distant shores bring tribute to him. And may the kings of Sheba and Seba bring presents and gifts to him. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out the afflicted who have no help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive like the grass of the fields. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. And may the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. And tonight's New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken for the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee of Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and got into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see these things that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they'd been told of them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Emmanuel by uh, Graham Kendrick there. And we continue with our uh, Sharing the Christmas Story, um, the VRF Advent book written by Sally Welsh. And um, we have permission all the way through Advent and Christmas uh, to use this material. And uh, whilst I've been away on holiday, I've been reading each day and I've um, been pondering on the questions and the reflections that Sally has given us. And today's uh, reading that she's pondering on is Luke chapter 2, 25 to 32. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for, for him what was customary under the law. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Amen. And Sally uh, reflects on this reading, saying, As a parish priest, I have always dreaded January. First, there is the languor following the very energetic December, which it seems as if the entire population of the parish passes through the church doors to sing carols and eat mince pies. This is wonderful and a joyous thing, but very tiring. And January usually sees a sharp dip in church attendance as everyone recovers from festivities. Then there is the fact that almost immediately I have to turn my attention to the season of Lent, which can be tremendously fruitful, but also quite challenging. This combined with short days, dark days, often filled with terrible weather, do little to lighten one's spirit. Worst of all, however, is the number of deaths which occur in January, as some of our oldest and most faithful community members leave this earth to travel onwards. 
I suppose the scientific explanation is that our immune systems are challenged by the new bugs we've picked up through gatherings and events over Christmas. But I can't help feeling that a lot of people hang on to life during December so that they can see their loved ones, friends and relatives for one last time. In January, with visits made, conversations over and celebrations completed, the imperative of staying alive is somehow weakened and death becomes something to be accepted as the next step rather than the postponed until tasks here are completed. It is in this sense of holding on until the task is done, which is so apparent in, in these beautiful moving words of Simeon. He is described as having the Holy Spirit resting on him, the part of the Trinity who inhabits our beings, prompting us, calling us, guiding us towards a deeper relationship with God. Simeon is clearly sensitive to God's purposes for him, but it must have been so unsettling to know that his task was to wait for the Lord's Messiah without having been given any further instructions. What a challenge to be told to wait for someone without being told what they look like, how they will appear or when they would turn up. What patience must Simeon have exercised as he prayed day after day in the temple, hoping that this would be the day when he could finally carry out God's will and be released into death. This passage doesn't mention his aches and pains which an old man would curry, nor the fortitude which had borne him to this point. But time must have hung heavily on his hands some days as he despaired of ever seeing the Messiah. And then an ordinary couple appears. Like so many other couples who'd entered the temple with their newborns ready to dedicate it to God and to his service. How in, to, uh, in tune must Simeon have been with God that he could recognise the Messiah in, his, in this helpless infant? But recognise him he does. And Simeon, filled no doubt with a mixture of joy and relief, takes this baby in his arms and sings out a hymn of praise and celebrations. The days of waiting are over. Simeon has a huge privilege of holding in his arms the saviour of the world. And now, task completed, he can go to rest, satisfied that his purpose on earth has been fulfilled. I wonder if the challenge in this passage is how we should live our lives so that we come to the end with the same amount of satisfaction and joy. What are the primary purposes for which we have been born and raised? And how can we carry them out? This is a huge piece of emotional and spiritual work, establishing just what we're here for and what God, God has called us to be. On this, the eve of celebration of the birth of the Messiah, we must surely make space for this essential task. Just as those souls who leave this earth in these early months of the year contend with time, contented with time spent with loved ones, gestures of love to others and celebration of all that brings hope to the people who surround them, so we will undoubtedly discover the loving service is at the heart of what we are called to do. We may not discover a single purpose, and even if we do, it may not be as clearly defined as that of Simeon's. But if we take time to pray and listen to the answer, to study the Bible and other sources of wisdom, we may begin to discern how we can best advance God's kingdom in a way which brings hope and life to others and joy and fulfilment to ourselves. And Sally asks us to ponder some questions. A big question here. If you discovered that you only had one day to live, what would you do? And if that day was a month or a year, how might you reprioritize your, um, uh, uh, reorder your uh, priorities? And should now be a time to carry out this reordering, since the future is known only to God. Some deep questions there for us to ponder on this Christmas Eve. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our time is in your hands. Help us to make good use of the time we have left to love and serve you better and to love and serve our neighbours with all that we can give. 
Amen. And let us continue now in prayer. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, born in a stable, be with the poor and the homeless this Christmas time. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, be with young mothers across the world at this Christmas time. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, visited by shepherds, be with all those who have to work this Christmas and those who long for work. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, who became a refuge, a refugee, be with those who fear for their lives and for those who've left homes and families this Christmas. As we pray, live and give, shine your everlasting light. Jesus Christ, the peace of our world, bring peace to our warring um, world. As we live and pray and give, shine your everlasting light. Amen. And we continue to pray using our prayers for the Synod. We lift up on this Saturday night the congregations and the churches in Milton Keynes. We pray, Lord, that especially at this Christmas time, they may be a beacon of light in the darkness of the world around them. And people will discover the real meaning of Christmas as they gather to celebrate your birth this year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to pray for the ministers within our synod and known to us that are unwell and that are in need at this time. We lift up to you the Reverend Jenny Mills and we continue to pray for her as she awaits her operation with uh, the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian D Davison um, for their daughter Susie, who's just home from hospital. For the Reverend Derek Hopkins at home facing health challenges. With the Reverend Solomon and Pauline A.O. Brown for Pauline's father Cahill. With the Reverend Samuel and Evelyn Silungui and for Evelyn's father Labson. For the Reverend Martin Ferris as he awaits tests, results from the hospital and for the way ahead for the new year. For the Reverend Stanley Crane as he continues to recover from surgery. For the Reverend Michael Forster and Jean Forster. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. And for Father Andy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With Liz, we continue to pray for her great nephew, Ryan, and for her daughter, Emma. With Prince, for Cheryl. With Andy, for Mike, his father. And with Paul and Alison, for Pat. And also for Alison's father, the Reverend Brian Russell. And with Tom, we pray for, his, for Mike, his brother, recovering from a triple bypass surgery. And Lord, we pray especially tonight for those for whom this is not the most wonderful time of the year, but rather is a time where it brings into focus the things that they haven't got, the things that they've lost. And especially, Lord, we lift up to you all those who are grieving the passing of loved ones, whether recently or down the years, but whose presence is missed in these celebrations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up to you those who have been recently bereaved. We pray, Lord, for all those who grieve for Beryl Poucher, especially Neil and the Reverend Gillian Poucher and Alice. For those who grieve for Trevor Smith, especially the Reverend Amanda Linley, his daughter and family. For those who grieve for the Reverend Doug Watson. For those who grieve for Bridget Monwara, especially the Reverend George Monwara and his family. Lord, you are the light of the world. You are its joy, its peace, its hope. Bring hope, bring love, bring comfort and healing into all these situations. 
And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So then, may we be blessed with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen.
good night. Merry Christmas. God bless. <laughs>